In this episode, we discuss the pride of Baghdad, what remains of Edith Finch, and we celebrate one whole year of podcasting. So sit back, grab a beer, and let's talk some BS. Saul. Yes. Saul. Hello. We did it, man. We did it. We we set out to do a year of podcasts at least. Yep. At least. And we managed to do it. We're here. We've done it. We only missed one month. Yes, but we made up for it. We made up for it. It's fine. This is episode 12. This is episode 12. This is a year. We've done it. It, And it was only technically like a month late. Like, so... It's great. It's awesome. Well done us. Welcome to the year anniversary of our podcast. Yay! Woo! I was going to buy party poppers, but I figured that might spike. I almost did as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do actually have something to celebrate before oh. you open your beer. I just thought I'd... I'd, I'd, I'd uh, oh, uh, oh. I, 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 I bought this from downstairs. Oh my god, it's Johnny Walker Black Label. Oh, it's yes. my favourite whiskey. whiskey. Are we toasting? I think we are. I think we should. When are we toasting? Well, are we know. toasting straight out the gate or are we doing this like know. after our entertainment exchanges? I've got what? some glasses. Oh, mate, you came prepared. I did. Ooh. I mean, oh crap. What the, what the hell is that with my wooded dishwasher? They do not. Cl- I'll, I'll, I'll take the less <laughs> dirty one. The more dirty one, even. Oh my god. Okay, this is a really bad podcast. Anyway, <laughs> things are going really well, actually. Like, As you I, can see, I, after a year, we are so professional. I know. Well, the thing is, I only just realised that I've been using my interface wrong the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah. We, today, th- like, this oh. is the clearest we have ever sounded in our headphones, yeah. period. Oh, oh, wow, brilliant. <laughs> and we've actually both got actual notepads. We've both got actual notepads. It's it's almost like we're professional. Uh, if it wasn't for that very beginning bit wait, that's fucked up the I, I entire thought, thing. Sorry, I haven't done though. What have you not done? I haven't I haven't prepared the the, the, the intro to the, the your entertainment exchange uh, at all. I haven't even looked it up. It's Oh fine. my god, neither have I <laughs> Wow. Well, so we'll both be frantically uh, wikiing that. Time. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, so let's just get on with it. Let's just go for it. Let's, yeah. Um... I figured um, a, a great Beer. way to start this podcast would be what we did in our very first podcast, which is we had a discussion about E3, because it was around about that time. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, and so... I don't think we're going to take as long as we did last time, because I think we made it like our main topic last time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I just wanted to discuss, like, the memeable moments of it, which I I think you can agree were breathtaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just what your favourite part of E3 was. I mean, I think anyone who listens to this podcast or knows us at all will know what our favourite bits are. So let's Probably. just get that out of the way. Yeah. You? Uh, Final Fantasy Remake. It looks exciting, and I'm like not even a Final Fantasy player. I I'm... looked at it and was like, that looks quality. I mean, for someone... Who, I mean, as soon as they announced it, like, however many thousand years ago, I've been buzzing for it. Like, every E3, I've been like, come on, give me some more Final Fantasy Remake stuff, you know, and it's just been... A, and it kind of got to the point where it was like, we're not going to see this. We're never going to see this game. But actually got a release date now. Um, I'm a little bit worried about how much it's going to cost me overall, just for the actual, just the game. The game. Considering what? that it's two Blu-ray discs. Yeah. And it's yeah. O- apparently it's, it's only going to take you up to the end of Midgar, which is like nothing yeah, <laughs> in the grand like, scheme of the game. The whole of Final Fantasy VII was put on, was it four or three discs? Three discs. Three discs. Yeah. And those were just normal discs, CDs, yeah, CDs right? Yeah, yeah, CD-ROM. This is like... Nah, two Blu-rays for like what? Maybe the first. Like, how long is Midgar? I don't know. It's like it's not even like maybe an, an eighth of the game, if that, a sixteenth of the game. Like, there's so much to do. Yeah. Like, obviously, you th- you forget that it, it's not just the main story. There's other places you can go to as well. There are two like two characters you don't even have to get that <laughs> take like entire like they take hours to get. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're two. You know, it's it's mental, really. So. It's going to be um, mad. I'm very but... glad, though, because if it is the end of Midgard, then at least we'll be able to see Red 13, who is my favourite Final Fantasy Yeah, character. you've got a picture of him right there. I do, yeah. I've got a figure of him downstairs. So, yeah, yeah. I- I'm very excited. So, I mean, to be fair, that's probably my favourite part of the game, yep. Midgard. Um, so, I'm, and, uh, I'm happy about that. That, that collector's edition. 
Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, how I, expensive I, I like, do you think that is going to be? I, I think they have announced how much it is, or maybe they really? haven't. I don't know, but I, I yeah, haven't I, seen a price. I like yet, my but... kidneys, so I'm not going to be getting it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is definitely mine. I've um, just pre-ordered a collector's edition of something myself. Actually, oh, yeah. oh yes. is it Zelda by any chance? Or... It is. Yeah. Yes, um, they announced. Link's Awakening uh, to be released for the 20th of September and they are releasing a collector's edition with that which I've only seen in Europe I don't think it's a thing that's going to be available in America wow, not okay. that collector's edition anyway this this collector's edition is cool because it, it comes with a steel book of what looks like an original Game Boy with like the original that's title cool. screen in it that's really nice really cool comes with an art book as well and I've also pre-ordered the fucking adorable adorable amiibo that yeah. goes with it yeah. it's like oh, the cutest it so thing i've ever cute. seen, I have seen that. that looks so nice <laughs> but wasn't my favorite thing to come out of e3 no, no. What was that came at the end of direct where i possibly maybe who knows i'm not gonna say might have needed to change my pants <laughs> <laughs> i did say that when i was watching i was like oh and so just came where they um. <laughs> announced a sequel to one of my favorite games ever Breath of the Wild. Yep, which we have covered on this podcast. We have. Now, obviously, they said it was in development. I reckon it's been been in development like since they finished Breath of the Wild and saw how successful it was. Yeah, yeah. I maybe. reckon it's been in development for longer than they're letting on. And I personally think it's going to come out earlier than everyone thinks it does. Well, Nintendo are like that, aren't they? They're very, they can be. They're very really likely. good at doing their announcements and not lingering on it for yeah. ages. Apart from Breath of the Wild got, got delayed loads, so that theory sort of goes out the window a little bit, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But here is my reasoning for why I think it's going to come out a bit earlier. Right. They're good. They, it's clear from a trailer that they're going to be using exactly the same engine and exactly the same models. So that makes it, so that makes it on, way easier. I think way. they're going to take a Majora's Mask approach to this. Right. So Ocarina of Time came out, was massively successful for the 64, and they re they released Majora's Mask literally 18 months after Ocarina of Time. And that's the because same they engine. used the same, same engine, engine yeah. and they just made it a lot darker. Like Majora's Mask is one of the darkest games in the series, yeah, barring maybe yeah, yeah, Twilight yeah. Princess. And you have a look at that Breath of the Wild trailer and tell me that doesn't look well, darker. Well, honestly, I I thought when I it came up, I, I thought that it was just something else, Breath of the Wild. Do you know what I mean? I just thought it was like yeah. a, I don't know, a loads of people thought a, it might be DLC. Like, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. it was going to be DLC. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. that, that's my that was kind of my initial thought. I was like, all oh, right, okay, it's going to be. But some I DLC didn't. For it, but... As soon as I saw that trailer, I was like, that's a sequel because they have said themselves they have stopped everything to do with Breath of the Wild. Yeah. As soon as that last DLC came out, um, Ballad of Champions, I think it was. Yeah. Um, they 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 said that's it. So as soon as I saw that trailer, I was like, "This is a sequel," mm. uh, and it looks a hell of a lot darker. I think they're going to take a Majora's Mask approach to it, which is what a lot of people were hoping for. So hopefully, we will see it a bit. Hopefully, than I'm, we were thinking, at, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um. Um holidays of 2020 next year really that soon um the the reason i think is because next year is going to be like the announcement of the next gen of consoles as far as ps5 and what everybody is calling the super xbox yeah. <laughs> um so like nintendo are going to need to throw their hat in the wing somehow and what better than to be like the next installment of the zelda game that won game of the year yeah, and by the way, this is also being released with a Pro Switch. Yeah, no, I think right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes that makes a lot of sense, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my reasoning like for it. I might be completely wrong. I might be looking into it too much, but I think that might be a way they go. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So if you can hear me fumbling about, I moved, and now I'm like, and now I can't, <laughs> I can't hear myself very well again. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, again, a year in and we're still fucking about... Oh. And we're we're still bullshitting. Who'd have thunk it? I know. <laughs> I know. So much. So yeah, that was pretty much E3. Other highlights were Keanu Reeves, the cyberpunk, obviously, which was great. Are you looking for... Are you, are you going to be jumping into cyberpunk, do you I'm think? I'm going to look into it more first. It probably won't be a day there one There hasn't been any gameplay trailers yet, have there? Not really, no. A bit like... Come on, like, yeah. guys. It's... But it looks interesting. Certainly yeah. looks interesting. But I haven't played any of 
uh, CD projects other games like Witcher Three, for instance, which no, ha- now is going to have yeah. a Switch release. Yeah. Which so is do you mad. think you'll do you think you'll pick it up now? It's on Switch or? Uh, n- probably not. For for the main reason, I don't have the time to sink into a game as large as that. No, this is I just true. don't. Um, other announcements that that got people talking: Banjo Kazooie for yeah, Smash, Smash Bros, which yeah, is yeah. fantastic. That was a great troll as oh, well. It was a great troll on Nintendo's part of the trailer too. I appreciated that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that's a pretty big deal because Banjo Kazooie is is rare. It's a rare character. Yeah. Um, and like. Nintendo and Rare split on really bad terms. That's why we don't have like your Golden Eye remakes and your Banjo Kazooie stuff, because mm. they split on really bad terms, and then Rare went over to Microsoft. So how have they? Uh, how have they managed to get it? Because like, um, Microsoft and Nintendo are being all, uh, are, you know, jumping in the same bed, <laughs> being all being all touchy feely with each other. You know. Yeah, I think the thing is though, I think game companies need to at this point. Yeah. Because especially a company like Nintendo, I feel like if Nintendo didn't do that, then I don't think the Switch would do as well. I think that the no. Switch would because like, if it's only Nintendo stuff, then then that is fine for the hardcore dedicated Nintendo fans. But yeah. I think it's been a lot of the third party stuff that has brought the hardcore gamers in. Yeah, because they're from like, well, actually, well. like if I if I've got a choice of playing this game on uh, a PS4. Or uh, only in my house, yeah. or on a switch that I can take on the train. I'd rather take it on the train. Um, while while we're on the subject of switch, actually, we might as well do this question here. And yeah, now. yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was about we to say it. Got a question coming from Harry Large, um, who is the photographer at EGX for the Eurogamer and outside Xbox and Extra meet and greets. Oh, sweet. Um, we we know each other quite well. Uh, he's he's brilliant. We like him. Um, he, I sort of condensed this into a question that's presentable because it wasn't yeah, like it was so. All right, all over the, place. the rough question is: uh, When is a game worth playing on the Switch? Right. I mean, now, I can't say that I I, I can answer this exactly. Right. I think in most situations, if it's available on the Switch, like go for the Switch because. It's a portable version of that game. Mm. Take Skyrim, for instance. A portable Skyrim. Fantastic. Take Doom. A portable Doom. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Witcher 3 that's coming out later. Having that portably. L.A. Noir. Yeah. Like, I, these I def- are yeah. massive games, games. LA Noir that we was on never two, thought... Three discs. Three discs. On, um, we never thought, like... If you, if you had told us even two years ago, all of these games will be available portably. On and a device. On a tiny little freaking SD card. Thing, exactly. You know. Like, no. That's never going to happen. No. And yet, here we are. Um, and, like, I've seen it. People are prepared to take the graphical down, uh, the graphics, like, downgrade in yeah. order to be able to play it portably. Because I think that's the world we live in these days, especially people our age. We don't have the time that we used to anymore for gaming. So having this stuff on the go is fantastic that's it and i think that's because a lot of people are into mobile gaming aren't they and things yeah. like that and they and that people are willing to do that to sort of get 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 especially have something to in, do. especially in japan mobile gaming is huge in yeah. japan and um yeah like it's sort of with the, that it's like well you can have you can either have this mobile game which is okay yeah or you can graphics, have a top have, tier yeah. triple double a game and maybe the only diff, the only downside is that you know you're gonna lose your battery yeah. Or, your, you know, which is actually, to be fair, like, what would you rather lose your battery on, your phone or your Switch? Exactly. Um. So, yeah, I just think that it's... That being said, I think only buy a game on the Switch if it ports over well. Because there's been one situation of a game I've played recently. Um, it was Brothers Tale of Two Sons. Right. Uh, which was a game released on... I believe PS4 and it, and Xbox as well. Actually, it was um, part of their e- Xbox was Arcade thing. Was it an indie? Yeah, game yeah, okay. pretty much. Um, and it's fantastic. The story in it is fantastic, and the game mechanics like hold the story up incredibly well. Yeah, yeah. But it was ported over dreadfully. What in particular? Like, like the graphics, or the game is three and a half hours long, so it's not right. a huge game yeah. to get through. And it's split into four or five different chapters. Mm. 
there was at least four occasions in the game where I had a game-breaking glitch, which meant I could not progress because I kept hitting an invisible wall. Oh, shit, really? To the point where three times I had to start a level entirely over again, and one time that didn't work and I just had to start the game again. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. That is bad, isn't it? And, like, this was 505 Productions. Yeah. And I got hold of them on Twitter, and they they literally responded with nothing back. Oh. So I I I put a rather stroppy thing on Twitter, going, "I finished the game. The game's great. The story's held up well, but it was the immersion was broken for me slightly by the fact that we had I had these game breaking mechanics, and I tried bringing them up, and they said absolutely nothing. Mm. I added them in the twi- Twitter as well. So. <laughs> At me, bitch." <laughs> Oh, and, well. and they still didn't respond back I to that. I suppose really, um, kind of, it kind of goes down to just doing your research and just exactly, really exactly. And, but know. if if you do your research and you see that it's a decent port, like minus the graphical capabilities, because they're never going to be as good as your Xbox One. Does it or translate your PS4s. well when you put it on a television? Like yeah, the graphics. They're st- yeah, they're, just I mean, as they're good, still not quite as good as Xbox because that goes and PS4 because they go up to 4K, but yeah, it yeah. is considerable from the handheld. Yes. Yeah. Cool. And it's like not enough to be like off putting at no. all. So that for me that that's the one reason why I wouldn't bother getting a switch is because I don't really go anywhere. Like if I was going to work on the train every day, mm-hmm. then yeah, I probably would consider it, but I don't. I'm at home all the time. For me it's been great, especially like with my line of job as far as um theatre technician is concerned. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I can yeah. just have it set up on a light box and any time that I'm not needed I can just Whip it out. Whip it out. And then you can play with your Switch afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Breath of the Wild 2, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, well, that, so, yeah, so, I hope yeah, that, that was... hope that answers I that so. question. I think we, so. We set the rights world to rights yet again, Saul. I know, right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get to this entertainment exchange. Yeah. Who um, wants to go first? Because... I don't really mind. Um, shall, shall, we... shall we do Pride of Baghdad first? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Cool. Why not? Um, oh shit! Hang on. <laughs> I panic. And, you uh, you gotta um, find. Do your you want to uh... explain what the entertainment exchange is while I have a look? Of course I can. So entertainment exchange. Um, for those new who are listening, um, basically we give each other a bit of entertainment as far as vi- it can be video games, it could be films, TV shows, uh, graphic novels, music, anything that you would class as entertainment, and we exchange it to each other. Um, it can, it's basically entertainment that, that the other person has not partaked in. They go and partake in it, they come back, and we give our opinions on it. There we go. Yeah, you Very explain nice. that like uh, way better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hit the same point. <laughs> it's fine. Um, this mic, I think this mic, it, the, the, the stand is just shit, and it just keeps falling down. So I get it in the right place, and then all of a sudden it'll just go... Oh, and then I'm, I'm, my mouth isn't in the right place. <sighs> Never mind, it's fine. So, <laughs> Pride of Baghdad. Yes. Pride of Baghdad is a graphic novel written by Brian K. Vaughan and illustrated by Nico Hen. Oh, I'm going to screw this name up. Henricon? 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 Henricon. Released by DC Comics Vertigo Imprint on September the 13th, 2006. The story is a fictionalized account of the true story of four lions that escaped from the Baghdad Zoo after an American bombing in 2003. Uh, it has a 3.9 out of 5 on Goodreads. Uh, and it, 90 96%, 96% of Google users liked this book, apparently. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so, Saul, what did you, what did you think? Uh, I... Enjoyed it as a strong word because it's depressing as fuck. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but I think I've come up with an alternative title for it. Or have you? Uh, yes, Urban Lion King. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be it fair. Was, yeah, it was really good. And what interested me is that it was based on a true, true events. Story, yeah, and yeah. although like the stuff in it might not necessarily be like par for par what happened like the premise of it it definitely is mm. yeah the um, overall story of it like yes yeah so the story is that um these four lions are in a zoo in baghdad mm-hmm. and one of them has been trying to plot their escape for a while 
trying to converse the other animals into causing an uprise, breaking free, yeah. saying no to the establishment, yeah. man. Madagascar. That, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> but way less funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> way less. Way less funny, uh, because what happens next is they get their freedom in the form of the, the zoo itself being bombed. Yeah. Like, just... Because I believe, like, the first line of the novel is the sky is falling, mm-hmm. which is said by a bird. Yeah. And, like, one of the lines who's perfectly content with where they are is just, like, piss off. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> Go away. That's the old one, right? Cause yes, like the one old, with, old with uh, uh, clawed out eye. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then there's a, there's a male lion mm-hmm. and the female lioness, obviously. That's a, that's and their, a, their child. And their child, yeah. Simba. Simba. <laughs> Soon I saw her that like, Simba. <laughs> <laughs> Only again, like somehow even more depressing than Lion King. Yeah, yeah. Especially at the end, <laughs> we'll, we'll get, get there. to that. So yes, they they earn their well, not earn their freedom. I think that's one of the lines pointed out in the thing is like, we're free now. What have you got to complain about? And the, the female line is like. Yeah, but we didn't earn it. No. <laughs> like, uh, and so it's basically the premise of the story is is a horizon, a sunset is explained to the child, and the child wants to know what a sunset is. Mm. So, like, the premise is basically them getting to a high enough place so that they can see a sunset. Yeah. Um, very so, simple premise, really. A very simple premise, um, and that that leads in like well with with ha- just how short the novel is. Like I got through it in an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm a it's slow a, reader because I'm very, a dyslexic. It's a very, very, very short novel. <laughs> yes, but very powerful. Yeah. Um. What else happens? There's an. Uh, the reason I say Urban Lion King is because. Um, they they basically end up in a town, pretty yeah, much, yeah, yeah. in Baghdad, that has been completely deserted because it seems like US military has come in and bombed the fuck out of the place yeah, and yeah. left again. And all these animals are sort of just wandering around free. Exactly. Um, including an encounter with a big black bear, which was horrifying as fuck. Yeah, definitely. I made my... Sorry, I, I, I keep going on about the fucking mic, but I just think I might be cutting out every now and again. I've moved my spit guard away, so if I... Don't Just don't on. spit, mate. Uh, can't can't deal with it anymore. You'll be popping. Oh, well, pop. <laughs> it's fine. I'd rather be heard. Fair. Uh, so yeah, that was that bear scary. Is just absolutely insane. Yeah. Again, probably not real. Like I mean, it, let's be honest here. It's like it's like twi- like three times the size uh-huh. of those uh, there, animals. There's. It's probably worth pointing out that right from the word go, there is like a conflict between the younger lioness and the older lioness. Yeah, I because think it's old... kind of like because they were both like what the older lioness was technically like lovers with the lion. Is that right? Uh, that no, right? no. She wants to be in captive because of her traumatic experience being out in the wild. Right. Where, yeah. yeah. Um, for lack of a better word, she was basically raped by a herd of lions. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, that's it. yeah, because that's shown in, like, a flashback right at the word go, so it's immediately set up and made clear why she's just happy being captive where mm. she is, which yeah, is yeah. fair enough, you know? Um, but because of that reason, the two lionesses keep butting heads because one of them's happy with where they are and the other one desperately wants to leave. Yeah. And then the the male lion's basically caught up in the middle, yeah, with I mean, a child that doesn't bone. really know what's going on. What I am, um, what I really like about the um, about this is the characters, mm-hmm. is how well the lions are written. Yeah, because it's believable that that's how lions would talk. Uh huh. Like the way they talk about like the way they talk about the tanks as a bigger predator. They yeah, don't. Yeah, ne- yeah. They don't call it a tank. They don't call humans humans. They call them what? They call them walkers, feeders. Yeah. Something else, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But they don't refer to them as humans. humans. No, because they don't know what humans are. Exactly. They don't refer to 
tanks as tanks. They refer to them as bigger predators. Yeah. And then, like, the way they talk to each other and stuff about, like, the hierarchy and things like that. And yeah. how... Um, I think this is why I, I I thought that maybe that the older one had a had a thing with the a lion because obviously that 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 male lion probably would have had sex yeah. with her at some point. It, it's made, it, there's a line in it. I can't can't remember off the top of my head, but it, it, it's a strong indicator that that is exactly because what, that's what the thing happens. that that's, that would that's... seem weird for us, but to but them, for a lion, that's just like yeah. that. Like you know, that's it, isn't it? Like people always are saying a lot of the time now, aren't they? That like, well, like you know, Simba and Nala technically would be related. Yeah, you know, um, it's but it's just, that's not weird to them. No, like that's that's, that, that's just a lion. Thing, that's isn't just it? a lion. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, there, there's a turtle bit as well, isn't there? Like the turtle. Yes. Um, a tortoise or whatever and it's like obviously because it's like a hundred years old yeah. it knows about the humans so that was yes. kind of a really that was a good way of them explaining it was to them they, what was happening exactly and and obviously the Americans there are there because of oil and that's yeah uh, what the turtle explains not he doesn't necessarily call it oil he just calls it poison in the ground but yeah, it's, yeah. it's visually made quite clear that that that's what it is that's what it is this is very like very. I mean, like when was nine eleven? Uh, two thousand one. Yeah. So what? It was like two years after that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, obviously very like very close to the nail. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff. Uh. Yes. But I mean, betrayed in the mind of a pack of lions instead of humans. Yeah. And it was very interesting to see it from. And in, not even another person's point of view, just a completely different perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah species even. Like, yeah. You know, it's almost like having a child's point of view. It's it's completely, you know, different. But it, the, the horrors are still there. Yeah. You know, they're still. It's still. Um, it's still very prevalent. Just because it's a different person, not mm-hmm. even a person, doesn't make it any less. Just because horrifying. they adapt it and see it differently doesn't make it any less scary yeah basically and i think they kind of mentioned don't they that it's you know look that you know because obviously you think it, there's lots of civilians and stuff that get caught up in these conflicts yeah and they kind of i think brian k vaughan sort of spoke speaks briefly about it how like the the brian that the lions are almost an allegory for those those civilians like while to us like or soldiers they might be like you know, seeing them as different, um, you know, like they, they they sort of try not to think of them as people, yeah, sort of thing. But it doesn't make it any less. Do you know what I mean? Like it just it, they're still gonna have that shit happen yeah, to exactly. them. Exactly. You know I mean? So that's kind of um, it's interesting how you can look at it that way as well. That it's not that like, these aren't like you, if you think of these as people, then it's it's you know just as bad. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, fucking hell, we're getting deep. Getting deep yeah, man. man. <laughs> well, um, what? Go on. No, you. you uh, I was going to say about um because obviously the first it's interesting this again this is harking back to the first podcast um I gave you Saga yes um which is obviously written as well by Brian K Vaughan mm. um so what did you sort of think like did did you see like do you feel like that there's any sort of um that you were like oh yeah like I like this because of like this reminded me a bit of Saga or anything like that like, yeah there was definitely like Saga elements in it yeah um. Uh, I couldn't tell you what right now because I haven't read Saga in ages. No, no, I no. Need to catch up on it well, again. It's been, a, been at least yeah. twelve months. I, at least, yeah, Who'd yeah. Have thunk it? Um, <laughs> um, but I, I suppose really it this, reminded me of Saga reading it. The, the way the way they speak and things yeah. like that, like um, the the kid as well, mm-hmm. the 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 lion lion cub. Yeah. Obviously, you have like him and you have Hazel, like is who's sort of written quite you know well as a child yes um which then does get better even better when she grows up like it still progresses and she still is talking like a hazel hazel word. is the daughter in saga, daughter in saga. Anyone... yeah sorry yeah yeah anyone who hasn't <laughs> read it or listened to the first podcast um I'm so yeah i remembered that to be honest yeah yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah I'm sorry <laughs> my mind was going hazel i don't remember hazel in pride of oh it's saga uh, yeah yeah sorry yeah yeah should have been there that made that clearer um yeah I think he just writes it very well. He's a very yeah. he's very good at writing the characters, I think. Yeah, um, extremely slow, which makes the ending of this even more 
gut wrenching. Yeah, so go on then. Um, the, ba- ending. the ending of this is they make it to the top of the building after a massive fight with this big black bear who's just an absolute prick of the highest order and mm. is, you know, stampeded to death Lion King style at the end by a bunch of horses, which is great. Oh yeah, yeah, that was good. I love that line is like where he's just on the floor he is like, Please just kill me and the one of the lionesses is like, Yeah alright and the male line's like, nah. Leave him. Let him suffer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, oh. Brutal. <laughs> Take that bitch. <laughs> So yes, after this encounter with the bear, they then climb to the top of the building, basically, and encounter a horizon sunset, Mm -hmm. which is beautiful and brilliant, and I was like, ah, ah, this is heartwarming, this is good, this is the light that we needed in this incredibly saddening story so far, and then the lion gets shot, the male lion, yeah, like, visually as well, like, it's drawn horribly in the best way yeah 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 it's so beautiful like Uh beautiful isn't the right word but like just the art is just it's harrowing yeah 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 so he gets gunned down uh then the older line is it no it's the younger line that then runs to uh, i can't remember it's the yeah it's the younger lioness that runs to the now shot line yeah, to yeah, make sure yeah. he's alright. She gets completely shot. obliterated. Mm-hmm. And then it's the older lioness and the child. And then they like they don't even escape because I, I half expected like the end of the story to be they managed to get out and now they're living a life and it's a bit awkward because older lioness and young, young child. child. Yeah, no, yeah. They just get absolutely mowed down yeah as there's well. not even a lot of breathe uh, there isn't like, even a space to breathe it's no, just it's just bang 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 bang, bang 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 child and older lion are they gonna no bang 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 yeah yeah they're, they're all i don't think they even get a line i don't think they even get any... no i don't think they no. even say anything do they and like the last the the child and the old lioness get like an entire Two page spread of theirs, and it's just like, oh, oh fucking, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. Red, just, they, they, we're just rubbing it in there, really rubbing in it's this. Like they're ending. really, really dead. They're... Just in case you weren't sure, they are dead. Absolutely. It's machine gun fire as well, isn't it? It is, because yeah, yeah. it's then made apparent later, uh, like literally in the, the pages after, that it was US military who's just walking around the town cleaning house, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, one of them is like, there was nothing I could do. They came charging at me, which they absolutely didn't because they were no. too busy looking at a sunset. And like the older lieutenant being like, it's okay, I understand. You did what you had to do. And it ends there with like a bird. I think it might have been, is it the same bird who was saying the sky is falling? Yeah, at probably. The beginning? Yeah, yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, like, and it, it's just pages and pages. Is it like at least 10 pages of this bird? flying around mm. while it explains that this was a true story of yeah. and i even in that short hour and a half of me reading i had kind of like forgotten about the fact that it was a true story yeah yeah because i, didn't I got even know. yeah because i got like so caught up in it but i i it sort of didn't even engage in my head until at the end where it's like oh yeah this was based on a true story of four lines who got shot by us yeah military um like straight out and I was like oh that was like a proper gut punch like oh, yeah yeah fuck oh, shit, yeah it's all shit. true yeah yeah I think in the, in the I think the true story is that they were they were like almost on death's door I think mm-hmm. and like it was kind of a mercy killing mm. but I think in terms of the story they wanted the American they wanted the impact to be the, the American army to be a bit be more betrayed as the bad people the bad people yeah. yeah which they are like the the tanks being described as higher predators that will just mow you down if you got yeah. into contact with them the whole bombing of a zoo yeah exactly <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh yeah uh yeah so overall so you enjoyed it but obviously it's, it's yeah no i i enjoyed my time with it definitely and again it's come full circle yeah um i think that's the pride of baghdad for me was always it's, it's great because it's um one of my fi- favorite like moments of going into the bin planet because i said like I was like, I'm looking for a new graphic novel. I want to listen to. Re- I, I just I'm reading Saga and Morning Glories. Um, 
is there anything you recommend? He was like, you like Saga? I was like, yeah. He said, well, come here. I said, we've just got this in. It's a, bre- it's the, uh, it's a, it's a, like, not the paperback, the uh, hardback, hardback, special edition or whatever it is. And yeah, you got to read this. It's like one of Brian K. Vaughan's like first, like big forays. And you'll really like this. It's really good. If you like Saga, this is, this is your, this yeah. your bang. And yeah, I did. Again, read it in like a, a, a couple of hours and, I've, I've gone back it's one of those things i've gone back to and read it again yeah I, so I, short. because it's so short i can see that being easier like i i keep meaning to read the rest of saga and i just haven't got round to it so the shorter more concise like comics i can get through in like yeah two hours is ideal for me that's exactly it and for the same for me as like, well honest... you, you know you, you you know that you there's no commitment to that like once you finished it it's finished you know honestly I like as you well know i don't do visual novels all that much the only one that i put any investment into really is life of strange strange yeah yeah and that's because i absolutely loved the game um so yeah it was nice to have something that i could get done in like a couple of hours have a complete story and and you know me i like my video games and my 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 films that make me feel something yeah yeah yeah. it was it was good well don't worry i have got plenty more where that came from Ooh. Yeah. Um it's awesome. Nice one. That was That's a nice Pride of Baghdad. Pride yep. of Baghdad. There we go. Definitely guys check it out. And, like and... like I said, it's very, very short. It's really, really good. Have I mean I know we kind of spoil it for you now, but like just the I artwork. I would still recommend so reading it just good. for the artwork because it is beautifully haunting. Yeah. Um... It's amazing. It's so good. Definitely have a read of it. Also, uh no notes. No notes. Saul did not have any notes this time. No notes. Car gone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Oh my god. <laughs> We're not even talking about anything Harry Potter today oh, either. That just no, no, popped into gone. my head. <laughs> oh my word. Right, let's <sighs> move on then, shall we? I thought I'd lighten the mood after <laughs> after that really depressing one. Well, moving on from one depressing thing to another. Oh yeah. <sighs> so I gave you what remains of Edith. Finch. What does remain of Edith Finch? Uh, spoilers. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, we'll so, there. What Remains of Edith Finch is an adventure game developed by Giant Sparrow Games, who also published the Unfinished Swan, which is also brilliant. Um, and it was adapted by Microsoft. Uh, Windows. It's currently available on Microsoft Windows, PS4 and Xbox One. It's not mm. on Switch yet, and I think that'll be great on the Switch. I reckon it will, actually. Um, I think that would really be awesome on the Switch. Yes, actually. definitely. It is an adventure game, uh, and it won BAFTA Game Award for Best Game, uh, and also the BAFTA Game Award for Best Narrative. Nice. So, I'll just jump in. Yeah, I go have for got it. Notes. I think I've got a lot of notes, actually, this week. That's so. sweet. It's like almost like a complete 360. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I normally have notes. I normally write something down. You didn't write anything I didn't, down. no. It just came from my heart, man. Wow. <laughs> Clearly just really enjoyed it. I did. I did. Um, well, actually, um, I really did enjoy this as well. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I have some gripes, but we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, I said, yeah, I feel like I'm really going to enjoy this. Um, I love these sort of games. No skill involved, just a good story. Yep. Hopefully. I said that's at the beginning. <laughs> Hopefully it's a good uh, story. This was written right, right, right at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of, most of the time it is, is chronological. Um, yeah, so obviously I like, uh, again, this goes back to uh, like the beginning of the first podcast. Like yeah. a strange, like like that sort of game. Yeah, it's not it's, too much it's skill involved. Basically. You put in as much as you get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you can finish it with all, as much or as little skill as you have. Exactly. Yeah. I finished the game within like couple of hours maybe and yeah. i 100 percented it i got all of the trophies w- with another like 45 minutes worth of work oh, really oh yeah see I, <laughs> I, I, I i i don't even know what trophies i got actually i don't even think i got any i must have got some for completing it's, it if 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 you do want to go for it unfortunately you're not given a platinum trophy for it like at all oh really no um but Aww. but it, you can 100 percent it quite oh, nice. easily um i definitely think i'm close to be fair mm. Uh, yeah, so I said, um, yeah, so things are pretty standard. 
like narration following uh narration following the writing like you know i, I like that. loved like, that that's really cool like, it's a really good way of doing it because i hate that in games where you're like where the fuck am i going and it's like, exactly the writing, the writing like guides you basically yeah and it's, it's just a really, really nice. nice visual thing yeah it's like, not like an arrow like go, go no. this way it's no. like, you know and even when like there are pits points where there isn't Narr- um, narration like it kind of like you see the you can see the, like the the letters like follow and it's, yeah. it shows you this is where we're going um i mean i had to say that it's um like the it's ve- like this these games like i love them but it's very much like that you know that i get a female actor and it'll be like i'm gonna talk really slow this is my life i'm always reading a poem but i'm not I look out the window. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I like it, but there's so many games like that. And I was just like, this is such a cliche at this point. It's it does, like, yeah. but it does it well. It does it like... well. It does do it well. But I feel like it's going to get to a point where it's like, I, I'm sick of this. Can we have something? It, does it have to be a fucking like, can't we just have like a, huh, well, oh, look, there's mum's house. Let's go and have a look at mum's house. Da, 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 da. You know. There is. Um, it's called Life is Strange 2. Oh, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I said so things are pretty standard. Uh, oh yeah, hang on. Uh, then it gets weird. So all the rooms are sealed. Okay, a tad odd. Then we enter Molly's room. So Molly is a little girl, and she's yep. um, you see a flashback. You go yep. to flashback, and uh, she's and I, I love these flashbacks. By the way, oh, it's a great. Like, it's a great mechanic because it doesn't put that game as just oh it's a walking simulator you walk yes. around and you do stuff oh, yeah. every story has its own game mechanic in yeah, it and it's, it's great. great i love it really do enjoy it. i do say that later that i just love how how they do that um yeah so uh yeah molly's been locked in her room and she's not allowed any supper and she's really hungry so she's saying i'm gonna go around and eat things and then i'm like oh you're eating some berries well that's gonna end well isn't it yeah. molly <laughs> holly <laughs> Is it Holly? Holly, yeah, 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 yeah. because Holly. it's Christmas time. Ah, yes. So they, you, because you can see Christmas decorations so, around. So they yeah, put so she's Holly, Holly Berry. And I'm like, well, that's not going to go very well, isn't it? Now? Nope. And an um, entire tube of toothpaste. Yeah, also. Yeah. And I think there's something else as well that she yes, eats. Yes, there's not... the dry carrot from a gerbil yes, cage. Yes. So great, basically not eating very good things. No. Um, and then we turn into a cat. Mm. Look, I'm gonna, look, I'm just gonna read this, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna read this, and this is my thought process. And then we turn into a cat. Fair enough. Quite cool. Love the camera work. Okay, now I'm an owl. Fine, okay. Again, it feels cool. Mate. Then I become a shark. Right, before before you jump into the shark bit, how graphic was the owl bit of you just swallowing oh, it's amazing. rabbit hole? It's great. <laughs> I loved it. That was awesome. The shark. All right, so this is I, usually uh, people's most funny bit with the entire game. Well, so then I so that yeah, so like I said, so I go, then I become a shark. What? <laughs> like, Just rolling down a hill. <laughs> and it was like, do you know, like when you when you glitch when you jump off a cliff in Skyrim. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. and you go like a ragdoll. Like, it, just, it reminded me of that. I was like, is this the same engine? Like, this is this almost exactly the same. Um, uh, I was like, now I'm a monster, but to be honest, by this point, I've accepted my fate in this game, and I'm all for it. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't. I wasn't a massive fan of the monster mechanic controls. No, it, got, it was a little bit clunky. Fair. Um, no, you get one of your trophies in that monster bit as well. I do. Yeah, if you let the drunken sailor finish the drunken sailor, you get a trophy. For oh really? It. Oh cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I didn't like that. It was. I got stuck at one point, and it was really annoying. Um. And yeah, at some time, and the shark bit took a little bit too long for my life. I was like, oh my god, fucking hell, I've got to turn around now, I've gone the wrong way. It was a, a bit <laughs> frustrating. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the owl was cool. I, I, enjoyed, yes. I, I enjoyed the mechanics in that. Really nice, really cool. Loved it. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I've just, I, again, I kind of just jump about because I just wanted to enjoy it. I didn't want to yeah. write too many notes. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Kid on the Swing, loved that bit, even though it was bloody sad yes I how didn't... long did it take you to work out you can use both analog sticks to swing oh not too long yeah, cool. no not too long no no i figured out because i've had i've obviously i watch like other people's reactions on it when i finished a game on youtube and stuff oh. and loads of people were like it took me fucking ages to work that bit out yeah oh yeah no no i was pretty quick actually because i was like well there's only one leg's moving and he's two legs to move and then i was like ah there we go um yeah um the barbara comic book 
um the one with the, that was so such a creative way of uh-huh. doing it and with like the when halloween it, music yeah <laughs> and like the you know that the, the, the moving into different panels like you know so you moved towards yes. it was just I so I may clever. have lied to you a tiny bit when I gave you the game and you're like is there any jump scares in this because there's one in the comic thing but it's nothing oh like no there was nothing massive. there that was okay exactly. I think actually I was, I, was, I was playing it I was like Saul for the love of fucking Christ <laughs> you said there was no jump scares also I love the fact that that like Barbara's thing Gave you a clue on where to go next with the yeah, whole key yeah, yeah. in the music box. It's so good. It's just so good. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, the uh, yeah, I thought it was a really creative way of telling the story. Um, well, another trophy. There's another trophy in Barbara's one as well, where you knock all of the tin cans off of the pool table in the basement with the. Crutch. Oh shit! Oh okay. Oh cool. All right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like with these sort of those with the story ones, you kind of don't really hang about. You just get through the story. Exactly. Didn't you? Exactly. Um, yeah, the bunker scene was quite sad. I mean, like, I mean, this is again like it, it's it's oh, such fucking like yeah, early days. The bunker scene is just uh, it's so re- it's, it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Um, yeah. That bit really got me. And then I had uh, yeah. So then again, really loving the different ways of telling each story. It was really good. You know, um, I took a break then. Then mm-hmm. I came back the next day. Um, that's actually where I took a break the first time. Oh, is it really? I've, I've um, played this game through twice now. Um, so I, I did exactly that. I took a break then and then came back to it. And then my second playthrough, I just played it from start to finish straight through. Um, it was actually then that I actually decided to have a look at the the um, the family tree. Because I felt like I hadn't really... Yeah. I, I felt like I had lost a little bit. Because it sort of... They kind of just... With these games, they kind of throw you into it. And they kind of... They don't spoon feed you, do they? They call... They... They just let you work it out for yourself, which mm-hmm. I think is good. But sometimes I'm like, what? I had to sort of I had to figure it out. So it took some time after this to try and understand the family tree as I was a little bit confused. Oh, I see. That's good. Um, that means you're just getting invested in the story. Well, no, I was. <laughs> I, and I, me and Kat just sat there. I was like, right, so she's his wife and she's his son. And it was really good. Like, I, I was like, you know, I was like, I was like, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I wasn't listening. But like I was like, it's fine. It was cool. It was good that they had that because you could figure out who was who and stuff. Because they yes. don't—they don't say. They just say, Edie and Mum, yeah. and do you know what I mean? Like they don't really explain. Yeah, yeah. They kind can, of just yeah. Can we quickly just talk about the house itself because it's fantastic? Yeah, yeah. Weird <laughs> like, as hell. Weird as hell, but but I think that's what takes it above Gone Home. Is that Gone Home was great. I enjoy playing it, but it was just like it's a standard un- house. A standard house. Yeah, Whereas yeah. this was like full on. It was just great. It, it, it was so creative, mm. really artsy, and again, it makes it a bit more of a an experience for the reader. I mean, Christ Almighty, I can't imagine there actually being houses like this. No, no, I'd live um, in it though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the way and it's, it's, it's constructed the small, as well. It's the small details as well, like the banister having a really rushed repair job on it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I remember seeing that right at the beginning going, why is that there? And then it's in Barbara's story that you work out why, because yeah, she attacks she's, the attacker yeah, yeah, yeah. and he goes over the, over banister, the banister. And yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, fuck, no, that's why that's there. And there's loads of that kind of stuff throughout the game. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I, actually, to be fair, I think I am going to have to go back and have a look because it, I think you do in these things. You do because I went back and played Gone Home and I saw so much more. Yeah. Um, stuff. Yeah. So anyway, so um, then we get to Gregory the baby scene. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, me and Cat were both. Well, I was playing it. Cat was watching, and we uh-huh. both had. To, I had to put it put it down. Yeah, there. I remember when I said to you when I told you what i was giving you i think there's one bit you're going to struggle with emotionally in the game yeah that was it cat was cat did not enjoy that bit in any way shape or form uh-huh. she was no. like why did they put that in she wasn't happy um for me i i mean obviously it's heartbreaking yeah but i think it explains how they are as parents yeah um, what's heartbreaking is just how happy that entire thing I know I know and that's out. what I said it was just it's so how something so happy it's probably the brightest part of the game yeah it's actually the scariest and the most haunting part mm-hmm. of the game as well um 
a really clever way of doing it. I mean, it bloody paint. It was annoying as fuck. I was like, please just, oh god, like just jump, you fucking. The thing frog. is, the thing is, you knew what was going to happen right from a word go. Yeah. Like you knew what was going to happen because you know that all of these stories have an unfortunate ending. Yeah. Without playing, so you you saw what was happening. You put the pieces together, but you still had to go through with it. I think by this point, I was like. Well, he's going to die. And every time I started a story, I was like, well, they're going to die. Yeah. Because that's it. That's just what the characters are. Um, the story is. And then as soon as I saw the tap and the mm-hmm. fact that we're jumping up, I'm like, fuck, yeah. no, don't do yeah. this to me. Do not do uh-huh. this to me. And it did. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I did. I took a minute. Yeah. I, I would be surprised if you didn't with that, especially in your situation with having a younger daughter yeah of course yeah yeah that's I mean, I why what, that's what yeah I that's why what, i said <laughs> her next bath time i was a lot more vigilant i tell you that much i mean i'm always I i'm imagine. always vigilant but i was uh-huh. almost like just like grabbing onto her <laughs> i know i you know but you know it's scary yeah it's a scary thought yeah, um, I, I remember look i remember playing this game and about halfway through the game i was like oh, i've got to give Adam, this as an entertainment exchange is fantastic. If he liked Gone Home, he'll love this yeah. type of thing. But I remember getting to that scene and being like, "Ooh, shit!" Oh, I don't know whether I can, but then again, like that's why I gave you the warning that there was like something in it that would yeah. get to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it was really well done. So that's yeah. okay. I think that's that's, thing, that's what makes it like acceptable is that it was well yeah. done. I mean, like, cause there's, uh, I'll give you an example of something that where like, it was kind of a similar thing where it wasn't okay for me. And yeah. I had to stop it. Uh, Matt's gave me a film called, oh, fuck, what was it called? Happiness or something. It was a Philip Seymour Hoffman film. Right. And, um, I watched it and there's a bit where this guy molests a child, basically. Oh. Jeez. And the way it's handled was not good. I did not like it. It was very... It was too near the bone. It was too close to the bone. And I just turned it off straight away. And I was like... I just, I, I think I actually told Max... I actually ch- shouted at Max. I was like, I, what the fuck? Like, this is not, like, okay. I hate this. Jeez. You know, like, I was like... Okay, I didn't shout at him. But I was like, I cannot You're watch this film. Miffed. But he was fine with it. He was like, you know what? That's totally okay. Because he, because I've watched some fucked up films. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've watched some fucked up shit, but like that for me was just a step too far. Exactly. Um, I think. But if that kind of stuff is well. handled tastefully, it's more palatable. Yeah, exactly. If we had literally been seen the child fucking drown. Then exactly. No, it wasn't fuck, like that no, at all. That would have been just like no way. Mm-mm. Don't need to see that. Do not need to see it. But no, it was. It was just handled in such a happy way yeah. which is like which said, which almost the makes it this part of the game yeah, it almost makes it more heartbreaking but it makes it more impactful i think yeah definitely it definitely stuck in my mind probably the most um, actually one of another question that we got was um what was the hardest story you guys found in edith finch would you put that up there as i think that was the one that like hit me the hardest yeah I'll explain mine um, later on because it will come up later on. Yeah, uh, um, I'll get through it and then yeah, I might drop my memory we'll... and then I, and then I might sort of say. Um, so yeah, then we get to the fish gutting game. Yeah, I think I might have skipped out one. Uh, there was yes, the the boy with the kite. Oh yeah, yeah, that was all right. That was that was uh, that wasn't my favorite one to be perfectly. But honest. again, if you go back, that whole scene where you're walking on the beach. Oh yeah, in the house. And you notice a totem pole that's just... Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you oh, put two and two together and you're like, oh, oh, oh yeah. shit. There we go. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole... That whole scene is playing out, played out almost fantasy-like with, like, the furniture bit getting caught in the kite yeah, and all of that. Yeah, so yeah. you know that none of what it's showing you is real and what's happened. Yeah. So we're working out, okay, well, what what did happen... And then again, it's it's why I think this game really um, is warranted a second playthrough because it's only the detail. Yeah, exactly. You go back and you go, oh, a totem pole fall, fell on him. Yeah, yeah. Right? 
Um, yeah, no, that one was like I didn't like that one as much. It's probably my least favorite one actually. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and there was a deer one. I don't know if I've come up to that one yet. Uh, the one with yes, the, the, the photograph. The photograph. That was yeah. a really nice one. Again, that reminds me very much of Life is Strange. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> oh really, yeah. I really liked the time a bit where you took the picture and then you ran as the dad. That, like, that was really clever. Took me ages to work out. Uh, only two, only <laughs> twice it to me. That yeah. was the second time. Yeah, I that that was out. probably the most difficult part of the game for me. Is it, it? It didn't take me ages by any means, but it took me a while to figure out what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So yeah, the fish gutting game. <sighs> like, so this bit was it was really clever because at the beginning I'm like I really struggled to get the rhythm right. Mm-hmm. It was getting really annoying. And then by the end, it was just almost second nature. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is so clever because they obviously do that on Deliberately. purpose. Because yeah. they know that if you're good at your games and stuff, and it, well, it, it you know, just if you have worked in this sort of scenario before, which I have, um, not going fish, but like in a warehouse scenario. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I think we both worked at the same place, didn't we? Uh-huh. Um, you know, you, you will, you know, you'll get into you, it. You start daydreaming. Like you yeah. just do. And as soon, and obviously by this point, I'm like, well, fucking hell, I know what's going to happen. He's going to chop his hand off, or he's going to chop his. So, yeah, something's going to that, that thing. I thought it was going to be like that. He like just sort of just is daydreaming so much that he cuts his hand off. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because obviously they 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 put him down as like a stoner. They show him as a stoner, mm-hmm. and that for me in my head was like, oh, it's going to be a horrible accident. Well, they... And then they fucking turn it around in mm-hmm. such a way that I was like, fuck, it's even worse than that. Yeah, they portray him where he's a, he, he, he's a drug addict who got help for it and is, I believe his mother then put him in that job to basically, I think, like, add some more normality yeah, to his yeah, life yeah, or yeah. something. Like, and something I like think that. Like, give him something to do after the rehab from drugs treatment yeah well the normality actually ended up being the, the thing downfall that killed him yeah really um and again i really like this bit like the the way that it, the, the the graphics change from like a 2d top down to like a full-on yeah to a full-on thing you know and like and the way it utilizes just both analog sticks yeah that is great it actually fantastic. it actually reminds me of brothers oh, okay um because brothers is played out Obviously, it's a story about two brothers. That I'm not going to get into the story. Two but the, brothers. The game mechanics is uh, an analog stick each controls one brother. Oh, I've seen this. Uh-huh. I have seen this. Yes, yes, I have. And literally, the only controls in the game are the analog sticks to move the brother and the trigger buttons for each interaction for the brother. Yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, that's great. Um. And I also and it, I like nice little touch as well. I like that you could pick certain bits, so it was like yes, um, his yes. queen or, or prince. his prince. I was like, that's cool. I like and that. It was serpents or rainbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, brilliant, fantastic. Just a nice little bit. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really change much in terms of the the ending. But it's nice to have that option. Yeah, definitely. In such a narrative driven game, exactly. Which I think they've done really well in this is that it obviously is a narrative, but it's not like just going through the motions we should probably hurry up actually what time are we on 58 okay we're yeah, fine um so yeah that was hot that was that was like oh god okay but it was coming so it wasn't like a oh it, i mean it was coming but i didn't see that ending coming no 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 i thought that he was gonna die obviously i knew he was gonna die but i didn't realize that obviously as it progressed i was like okay well he's gonna fucking top himself um hey, it was it was that bit in like the first person mode where there's this big celebration and like you're going to be crowned on all of that you go up them stairs you turn the corner and then you see the guillotine and you're like yeah yeah oh, oh shit fuck yeah yeah i think way before then i figured out it was going to happen but um... i see i didn't literally not until oh, i really? thought it was going to be a chopping off hand he bleeds out thing like, <laughs> I mean, I knew that he was killing himself, but yeah, I didn't think about the fact that he put his head. Yeah, no, no, I didn't think about that. He, I didn't think that he'd put his head under. Um, but yeah, which to be fair makes more sense, I suppose. It'd be quicker. Um, right. Yeah, anyway, so I said uh, when she said she was pregnant. Oh uh, yeah. I had hope that the ending would be happy. <laughs> which uh, is why when I got to the ending, 
I was a little pissed off. I worked out she was pregnant right in the word go. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, because wow. I always do a thing in games, in first person games, where I look down and see if I can see my legs. Oh, my okay, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. looked down and saw a pregnant belly. Oh, yeah, see, <laughs> I did that and I didn't clock. That's so weird. Uh huh. Because then after she said it was pregnant, I looked yeah, down it was and I was why like, oh, she, she was pregnant. Yeah, it was why she was climbing on that tree. It's like, man, I really wish my mum had told me about this why I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, so she says get, that, and you then get, I go, like, oh, shit. You get little context clues throughout the game, because there's a certain part where you open up one of the secret passages that you have to crawl through, whereas I, like, um, this place was made for children, not big bellies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kat said that as well. Yeah. She was like, yeah, I thought, she was like, oh my gosh, yeah, she said so that. So you're earlier, given you? all of these tiny little context clues that some people will get, and some people won't, until it's then outright stated later on. Yeah. It's just clever. So I'll kind of wrap up now, yes. I think, really. Um, so I loved the journey. Mm-hmm. I loved learning about these family members. Mm. Um, I loved the story. I loved the, the gameplay. And I think for me, that's why the ending was so... just. Uh, it just wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. It, it, for me, it just proved the curse was real. Um, and did, I didn't... You, did you want to find out the rest of that story before... Yeah, in, I did. In the yeah, library yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. I was really hoping there'd be a bit where you could go I had, back to I the actually, library. I actually wrote a, a, right at the end. Do you actually find out what happened to e, in Edie's story? No. I set word to find out. No, you don't. Um, there's nothing there, uh, which is really annoying. A lot of people have said that it wasn't real, that she was like, or she was already too old to be able to make that journey, and it was all in her head. Um, and and some people said that is actually how she died, and she was already dead. Um. I don't really know, to be honest. I don't There's really a lot of theories on this game that's quite interesting. Yeah, I had a read through of them a the couple. I'm not going to go into it too much. No, no, we I don't do have time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just sort of... I think the fact that she was named after great-grandma Edie, mm-hmm. who was the only one who lasted so many years, Yeah, I kind of thought, took that as a hint that she was going to survive. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's a theory that Edie is bad person throughout this entire thing and it's an incredibly interesting thing. Oh really? Yeah, oh, I have to have I'd a look recommend at that one. watching I'll link you to the YouTube video. Yeah, please for do, it. it's yeah. Really yeah. Interesting. Um and yeah, I don't know, I just sort of like I just kind of wanted to I don't know, I just thought it would have been nice just to end on a bit of a happy note. Um and it just kinda of just kinda of proves that the curse is yeah. real. It goes um, back to the sun right at the end. Yeah. And I like, you know, it, I don't know. It's just a bit sad, really. I just didn't. Yeah. Really, I didn't want a sad ending. I wanted, it to, I wanted it to be a happy ending with the sun. But hey, the sun might do well. Hey, yeah. Well, no, he won't. He'll die like all the fucking rest of them. Um, and he's all on his own. He's got no one. No, you know, that's I'm assuming, the sad I'm assuming part, he's got the dad, yeah. her, his dad, or whoever is his. You know, that's the thing. The no. father's never even mentioned for No, no. Game, so he might not even weird. have that. It's just plus, you know, she had the child when she was eighteen. Yeah. Oh, it's just. Yeah, so I'm just yeah. That's the only thing I didn't like about it. Literally, everything else fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, the hardest part for me, I don't know. I think really the hardest parts were probably some of the mechanics. Actually, yes. <laughs> um, um, I'm I'm gonna read out the name for this question. Yeah, go um, for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, this is what uh, was from Liam Turnmore. Uh, okay. What story hit you the hardest? Hit you the hardest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's Lewis's story. Which one was that one? That was the fish. Yeah, story. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I and I think it's just because it was betrayed so well. Like I've gone through the whole mundane job thing. Obviously, I haven't been daydreaming to the point where it's been like dangerous, dangerous for me. But I've certainly had moments where it's certainly physically harmed me. Take I worked in a McDonald's kitchen for a year. Yeah. And, like, you get into such a pattern where you do just drift off and start thinking about other things. And that has led to injury for me, obviously, working near massive, like, ovens and all of that. <laughs> yeah, um, not like, the best place to have a daydream, really. Exactly. I've got a scar here, yeah, literally yeah, on yeah, my yeah. hand, yeah. Um, from me not really thinking and having a bit of fat just land on my hand straight off the oven. Yeah. And that's left a permanent scar for ages, obviously, Obviously, it's not the same as beheading myself no, on a guillotine. No, no, but... but I can relate to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the story that impacted me most I because think... I've been there in a situation. Whereas 
realistically, I think Gregory's story is probably the saddest, the baby. Yeah, yeah. But I don't have that context. No, so no, So it doesn't no. hit me as much. And I th- yeah, I think I'd be... Yeah, Gregory's one definitely hit me the most, noticeably, because I had to stop playing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely the answer to that question. But yeah, I think you're right that that one... For me, like, Lewis's story did hit me oh, quite in quite a way. And, yeah. and in the same way, because I've had my mental health issues and stuff yeah. to do with work, a lot of mine. And yeah, like, I totally get that mundane mundanity and the 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 is this literally all my life is going to be you know um and it's Christ, i'm you know, still going through that now exactly, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> i know i i still do it i know i still do even to this day like you know it's just it's just one of those things um but yeah i totally get that from him but obviously his is way more deep rooted like yeah, he is li- yeah. he makes up that world he is like you know um I don't know. I, I don't want to get the the words wrong, so I'm not going to name what it that is the thing is. But yeah, it's a clear problem. Mental, Mental issue. health issue. issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That, I think. But yeah, definitely Gregory for me was uh, definitely Sweet. the hardest one. To and watch. yeah, Lewis for me. So there, there we, we go. go. Hope that answers that one. I think it does. So would you recommend? Oh yeah, definitely. Players? Yeah, definitely would recommend. Especially seeing that you can finish this game in like two hours. Yeah. Two and a half. That's it. And I think the thing is, in in, in our busy lives and stuff, like, I think these games are really good to have. They've become some of my favourite games to play for that reason. Definitely. Oh, right, Winsall. Well. We said we were going to do it after the entertainment exchange, so let's do it now. Let's do it. Let's Let's have a toast. Let's have a toast. We've been going for a year. How how many of you have, have, have been with us since like the word go yeah like how many people actually listen to that two hour the um, thing at the pilot. right at the beginning yeah where we didn't know what the hell we were doing and it's well I mean we still don't know what we're doing now but hey I don't know how much you want that'll do that's mine you, right. you pour yours Ooh. I've got quite a lot there it's fine we don't have to down it we'll just sip no, it no, you no. know like, this, this, this isn't a downer we're just sipping whiskey well uh, cheers, cheers to a year. To a year of podcasts. Hey. Nice one, mate. Well done. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's really tasty, man. Mate, that label is. I the didn't like shit. how much we'd gotten through that. That's I, you. I, I that's think definitely you. No, Graham helped as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I normally have it at the end of the night, normally, and I not I don't tend to get through much of it because I'm already fucked. What do you want? Oh, the, the lid. The lid. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, oh, that's really nice. Fuck. Mate, I love Black Label so much. Mm-mm. So much. Hey, Small Town Drunks come at us. <laughs> We're drinking whiskey as well now. Mate, I haven't seen Small Town Drunks in ages. No, they're taking... I think, they're I think, taking, I think, oh, I think okay. we took them down. We did. <laughs> they're definitely beating us on the amount of podcasts, though, to be fair. Yeah, but, yeah they really are. And they do it like, did it like two, uh, you know, every two weeks, whatever, so... Awesome. Exactly. So... Yeah. We, we made it to the end. Shall we, we trade now? <laughs> we made it to the end. That's it. This is the <laughs> last no, podcast. podcast. That's it. No, no. We, made it. we did a whole year. Should we trade we now and then we can sort of... Um, yes. Let's do chat. entertainment exchange and then, yeah, we've got something fun planned for the end. Yeah, we do. Right. Okay. Uh, go for it. You go first. Okay. So I have a film for you. Ooh. Exciting. Exactly. You mentioned not seeing this like a bit ago and it's one of them films that I... Don't think needed to be made, but I enjoyed the experience. Okay. I have got for you Solo, the Star Wars movie. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you asshole. <laughs> Honestly, <sighs> it is not as bad as you think. And, like, obviously, we, we heard the horror stories of yeah. we need to bring, like, act- training people in for the actors and blah, blah, blah. It's oh, It's... God. It didn't need to be made. It I mean, really Woody, didn't. Woody Har- Harrelson is in it, so that's already like you know, and Donald Glover. So that that that's a win for me. Honestly, but... it it's better than you think it will be. It delivers exactly what you want. <laughs> the Guardian. <laughs> that. <laughs> that's the only review on this thing. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of dubious, isn't it? If you want shit, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I hope I enjoy this all. Yeah, fuck me. I didn't think it was awful. 
Okay, but you fucking love Star Wars, so... I mean, I do, but even I was fucking... Like, I didn't see this in the cinema at all. I waited until it came out on Blu-ray. Okay. So, and you weren't, like... I enjoyed my time with it. All right. It didn't need to be made, obviously, but I enjoyed my time with it. All right. Fine. I will watch it. But this is the first (laughs) time, I think, where you've given me something and I've gone, fuck fuck. off. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Um, I am. G- I'm going to give you a comedian. Mm. Comedian. This is Joe Lysett. Oh, okay. The, the the title of this the, the, is the best comedy tour title ever. <laughs> That's the way. Aha, aha, Joe Lysett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm already invested. He, That's he, great. He, um, he has a joke in it about it, and it's just like you know, he just goes, he just goes, oh. Came up with the, that one in one night. Oh, I thought, well, well done, Joe. Take the night off. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. You might, you must have seen the clip of him online when he was doing eight out of ten cats. Does count countdown? Yeah, the, it uh, does ring a bell. The parking fine. Yeah. Yeah, you must have seen that. That went viral. Um, <laughs> he does way more in this. It's Sweet. brilliant. It's really funny. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Yeah, man. I look. I like my comedians. Like, I have a big old DVD pile full of comedians so I'm, well, I'm looking forward to it. and if you one. like that then uh, I've got another one so you can have a listen to, watch to that one sweet as well. so there we go alright right then so we thought that as it's our anniversary as it were that we would go through and we'd have a we'd sort of we'd rank our favourite uh, our entertainment exchanges yes from, from things that uh, we fucking hated hated all right the way through to, to the that's all right. Ones. But before we do that, I've got some stats for you. Ooh. So some BS some, stats. Some, some BS stats. That, no, they're real. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was a really shit joke. <laughs> um, okay, so our most viewed podcast. What do you reckon that one is? What do you reckon at the top of the uh, 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 off the bat? I would either go with like our. Big old entertainment exchange, which was Corn and Breath of the Wild, or yeah. maybe our Christmas one. Our Christmas one was good. Um, it was actually the big one. It was, was it? Yeah, it's the big called, one. Yeah, in, entitled the big one, which was the Corn and Zelda one. Yeah, that Sweet. had eighty-seven views on um on um on uh, my <laughs> goodness on, on YouTube. Oh my god, that's wait, wait. almost viral. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many people. I don't know if it translates to iTunes listeners. To I, that. Don't know. I don't know. I have no idea, but. Hey, whatever. Um, the longest one, I mean... <laughs> it's our first one. It's the pilot one, which is, which is two hours, 15 minutes and 57 yeah. seconds. Very long. What can I say? I had a lot to say about Life is Strange. It was mainly you talking. It was. Mainly you. That's because when I feel panicked, which was our first podcast that I did, I talk lots. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um... Uh, uh, oh yeah, I also said the pilot part one and two technically have the most like combined, but yeah. like people sort of mainly listen to the first part and then yeah, were like, I'm not going to listen to the second part. Oh my god, <laughs> these guys are so fucking annoying. <laughs> oh dear. Um, they won't stop talking. The shortest one was um, the uh, it's it's just a Khajiit. Which was the uh, um, was that our uh, most recent? No, that wasn't our no, most no, recent. No, 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 that, that was, was the one, one before. D- one before last. Um, it was an hour and twenty six minutes wow. and seven seconds. So that's the shortest one. We try, we try and aim for an hour and a half if we can, but yeah, it, it was, never uh, usually uh, happens. No, it's definitely not going to happen today. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, it's our year long anniversary it's podcast. Fine. It's gonna, fine. We're going to make it two hours. Again. We're going to make it two hours fifteen <laughs> again. It'll be fine. <laughs> I think we might end up doing that. Um, yeah. So. Entertainment exchanges. So we have exchanged nine films. Yes. Five games. Uh huh. Two documentaries. Ooh. Um. So that's corn and um, and Lion of, Lion in of God. the palace. Yeah. yeah it, as the palace is burned. Alice. Two graphic novels. One like music album. Uh, two TV series. One musical and mm. one comedian. Well. There we go. Make that two comedians. Two comedians and ten films. Oh. So. Um, I don't know how you want to do this. Okay. I, I kind of want to... So, basically, what we've done is uh, we've ranked them, and then we've also predicted what each other have ranked. Ranked from worst to experiences best. to best. So, I'm going to get a pen, and then as we go, I think if we get it right, yeah. then we should mark it. Right. Down. Let me grab a pen. as, as Let, I, mean, oh, I, I just realised that 
both of us were talking away from the microphone. There, oh, that's so. part of the fun. Have you got a pen or? Uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yes, I do. Right. I've, I mean, I've got I've not got a pen. I mean, I've got a notebook, right? Oh, yeah, 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 I know, right? We've both got <laughs> notebooks. Um, so, uh, I suppose what we'll do is. Do you just should we just go through the list? Shall we go we... from worst to best? Yeah. Do you want me to go through the list of the podcast of all the stuff we've exchanged first? I mean, you can do. Yeah. Okay, I'll not? quickly run through them. Okay, Let's do it. Uh, this is from the first podcast right down to the most recent. So, um, this is from my. So I'll, I'll mine will be first, then Saul's, and da da da. I tell you what, you read your list of stuff I gave to you, and I'll rifle okay, through. Okay, that mine. sounds good. Okay, so uh, life is strange. Then you had. Okay. I had Saga. Uh, War of the Worlds. I had As the Palaces Burn. Uh, which is the Lamb of God documentary. Yep. Uh, Spaced. Bottom. Resident Evil 7, the game. Room. Not the room, just room. room. <laughs> Hardcore Henry. Uh, Tirasass. Uh, the album. That's the music album. Yes. Uh, Eddie Azard. Evil Aliens. <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild. Corn Deuce. Resident Evil 1 and 2. In Bruges. John Wick. Oblivion. Labyrinth. Clerks. And What Remains of Edith Finch. Pride of Baghdad. Right, there we go. So, Saul. Yes. Um, what was your number 11 <laughs> least favourite entertainment exchange? Go on, take a wild guess. Was it Evil Aliens? It was Evil <laughs> fucking Aliens. <laughs> Saul did not like that film. I did not. I went on about, for people who haven't heard uh, that podcast, I went on about a 40 minute rampage yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> and we it won't go glorious. into massive detail about how, like, about it. If you want to hear about these, then go yeah. and find them. Go, go find go them. Find it, them on was, the... it was a fun rant. So <laughs> I got I got that one right. That's uh-huh. a tick. Um, uh, go on then. Guess what one my, my least favourite one was? I am going to guess Resident Evil 7. No. Oh, shit, no, son. No, it's not. All right. No, you are really wrong. Hardcore Henry? It was Hardcore Henry. Yeah. Bah, that's my number 10. <laughs> no. Fuck. No, it was Hardcore Henry. Honestly, I found it difficult putting this list together for you. Did you? Yeah. I also kind of did it for you as well, too fair. Um, right, so, uh, number 10 for you, Saul. Mm-hmm. What was your number 10? My number 10, you're probably not going to like me for this one. No. It was Corn Deuce. <gasps> wow. Why? Uh, it was the, the um, menu. menu. Yeah, I it thought it really was took me out of it. Like, Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed what I watched. Yeah, yeah. But it was such a pain in the ass getting to that stuff that it really wound me up. Okay. And, like, don't get me wrong, like, I enjoyed what I watched a, a, a fair bit. But when I sit down and watch a documentary or a film, I expect to watch a documentary yeah. or a film right. and not play a video game. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> okay. I mean, I had that one as number five for you, so I was really <laughs> <Shit>. optimistic. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right, fine. Um, that's not going to be that then. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number 10 uh, was uh, Labyrinth. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I think more just because of the acting and some of the story aspects. Do you want to know something really weird? What? I've got that down as your number five. Number five? (laughs) Actually, no way! Oh, my God. We're in sync, but in the totally wrong way. (laughs) That's brilliant. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's great. Really? Because I, yeah, I genuinely thought that the puppetry would have put it high for you. No, no, no. Unfortunately, it didn't. Ah, The story was just a bit, the acting was just a bit too, like, you know. Having said that, like, I think most, from, like. You put Labyrinth above Resident Evil 7. I'm, I'm shook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I I, will get to that. Um, I have to say, I've pretty much enjoyed all of these things in some way. In some way. I don't think even like Hardcore Henry, I've gone like it was shit, it was, but, but I, the, the I idea was good. Yeah. The most things I've enjoyed, mm-hmm. to be fair. And I think, I'm sure on some level you enjoyed Evil Aliens or mm. on some astronomical level. I enjoyed the fact that I get to have a 40 minute fucking rant about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it feels like that you need to watch with friends. I think yeah. That's the problem. Um, Right, number nine for you, Saul. Okay, my number nine was Oblivion. Oh, I got that right! Hey! Yeah, um, yeah, sort of, yeah, I, I can see, I, I had a feeling that you, that probably would be quite low for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. And again, I, I think I, 
I'd just like to point out that it's not that I fucking despised all of the stuff at the bottom. That's not the case. No, no, no. I, I kind of just said that Apart as well. Apart from like, evil yeah. aliens, I can suck a dick. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like I said, yeah, we, we got something out. I think we both got something yeah, out there. Really. Yeah. Just, it doesn't mean the things that are at the bottom are the worst. Um, mine was Eddie Azard. Was it? Yeah. I got that as number eight, so I wasn't far off. I wasn't off. far off, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was good, but, yeah, I just, you know, I think I, I've seen better. Yeah. Um, like, my number nine work. for you was the rest in evil films. Yeah, no, you've got me way wrong. Yeah, I really have. Really wrong. Man. Yeah, no. Uh, go on then, what was number eight, Saul? My number... I mean, this, I don't know whether this is interesting listening for you guys. It's interesting for us. Yeah. I don't know, who cares? I mean, <laughs> this fo- is very self-indulgent. Yeah, this podcast. For, for the people who've listened to all of our podcasts, it'd probably be quite interesting. Yeah, but for what else? Oh. But hey, we're going to make this an annual thing. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we will, but maybe we won't. I don't know. Uh, uh, my number eight was Clux. Oh yes, I got that oh, right too. Fucking hell, you're on a yes, ball. I want the roll. I got three. There should be like a. There should be a prize. For the winner. I'm not going to lie, I, I haven't been marking down so far. Well, you've got one right, I can tell you that. Uh, that was... The end. The... No, no. Wait. Uh, corn. No. No, you haven't got any Oblivion. right. Oblivion. Number no. nine. Number nine. No. no, no, because I get the points because I guessed oh, right. Out. Yeah. Right, you yeah. didn't get any... You, you, didn't, you haven't got any right. Oh, fucking hell, I haven't, no. Because I thought that you were going to get Hardcore Henry right. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't no. So, yeah, you done fucked up, Saul. I really have not done well. Uh, number eight. Have I said my number eight yet? No, I haven't. Um, Resident Evil Seven. Really? Yeah, hmm. that was actually almost quite hu- a lot higher. Uh, just because I did, I just I did enjoy. I liked the the I liked it. What it was doing, it did well. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like. That. Like it, just, it. It, it scared me. Yeah, mate. <laughs> you know? it would have been higher if I just thrown you in VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sure it would have been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, mate. No, 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 no. It's gonna happen. I'm, I'm sure it will. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no, I enjoyed it, but yeah, it was just it was scary. Uh, That's the point. <laughs> uh, uh, go. So number seven. Uh, my number seven. Flicking back and forth from the uh, note. Can I guess? I want to guess see if I if I'm gonna get a number three for three. Yeah, go for it. Tourisas. No. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Pride of Baghdad. Oh no, that was number six. Ah, oh, I put down as number six. Oh man. Fair enough. Enjoyed it. Just enjoyed other things more. Yeah, just yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, my number six was a uh, wa- uh, wait. Oh, no, number seven. Sorry. Uh, War of the Worlds. Oh, I've got that at six. Oh, I know. <laughs> we really are in sync. You oh. are. You, yeah. You're doing all right. <laughs> doing all right. <laughs> I'm clearly a terrible fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> you just weren't listening, were you? Um, no, I think like, this is good, actually, because it can't make me reflect. I got spaced I as num- your number seven. Number seven. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no, Man. no. Yeah, right. damn. Uh, yeah, so uh, what was I? War the Worlds. Yeah, it's good. You know, just the, the music was was good, but it just went. Some of them songs went on a bit too long. Um, that was why it kind of went. No, low. Nathaniel. Oh, yeah, that's so annoying. Like <laughs> Carrie Hope Fletcher is one of my favorite YouTubers, and like an, an amazing just person all around. And she, that's the part that she plays. And I was like, oh really? I was like, I definitely don't want to go and see oh, that. Oh no, Nathaniel. Yeah. <laughs> Least favorite song of the entire thing. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Uh, anyway, yeah. I Karen. mean, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> number, but it's still a shame. Number six. Well, my number six. Oh, yeah, your number six. My number six was As the Palace is Burned. Okay, The Lamb of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lamb of God documentary. Fair enough. I like my documentaries. What can I say? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I think we're kind of getting to the ones that we really did enjoy, aren't mm-hmm. we, like now? Yep. Um, mine was Red- the Resident Evil films, number six. Damn, I'm way off. Um... Uh, Honestly, I had I kind of put number one out of my mind because I didn't like that one that much because obviously okay. it was one and so two. So you went from two. But number two was was really enjoyable. And does it make you want to maybe explore? Yeah, I think so yeah, I think I'll probably do a watch a couple more. Fair. Um, Fair. number five for you. So we're kind of in the top five now. We our are, favorite yes. ones, aren't we? Um, go for it. What was number? My five? number five was Saga. Saga. Yep. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's the first sort of the first one. I put that as four. So 
you know. I mean, you weren't far off. I weren't far off. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I thought your number five would be corn. I was well off. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, Mate, my... my number one will surprise you then. Uh, oh, really? oh, wow. Okay. Um, number five for me was Zelda. Was uh, it? I got Labyrinth. Uh, yeah, no, no, it wasn't that. That was number ten for me. Yeah, uh, man, yeah, no, geez. Zelda. Um, yeah, I liked it. Um, yeah, that was a, a really fun experience. I, I actually found myself wanting to keep playing it, um, which is really good. You know, and I think actually the tablet helped with that. Yeah, what um, the Wii U, the Wii U yeah. tablet, because then I, I, I cat could watch the telly and I didn't feel bad for wanting to play it. Do exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, number four. All right, my number four. Is bottom. Bottom. I put bottom so low. I really didn't think you liked that that much. I liked it a lot. Wow. Oh, well, there yeah. we go. Obviously, you did. It was number four in your list. Yeah. It's a, it really is interesting, is it? We picked a really <laughs> shitty thing to do for our draw. It's fine. I think it's interesting. It is interesting. I like it. It's fine. If you've listened, or if you haven't, oh, there we go. We've said it. <laughs> um, number four for me was spaced, which is very interesting uh, because I got that seven. That was, yeah. um, that was four for it was it both the series yeah. ranked four in our lists. Yeah. Very interesting, that isn't it? Yeah, that's weird. We are in sync. <laughs> this whiskey's going straight to my head. <laughs> yeah, it's a good whiskey. I like it's very it. Very nice. Uh, number then, th- oh, 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 that's oh, very that's nice. V- oh, that's very nice. Saul's wearing a that's very I'm nice wearing t-shirt. a that's very nice t-shirt. I almost wore mine today, actually. Oh, that would have been embarrassing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what was my number four? Uh, no, my number three, even. Three. My uh, number three. Well, wore... I put my number three, your number three for me. That I guess it was as the past is burned, but it wasn't because you've already said no, that. One, so. No, my number three for you... That you, you gave me. me. Oh, for my number three for me. Yeah. Was room. Room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I put that as two. I I, I definitely think you, I I, knew, I I felt like that you did definitely. That was I really idea. enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number three. My number three was Edith Finch. Mm. I got that as number two. Yeah, so again, I think we're pretty much... The top five, we've done pretty well at sort of kind of get... get you know, we pretty much almost... Yeah, my number three five. was Zelda, but that's probably wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was in my top five. Um, number two, Saul. My number two? Yeah, go for your number two. Was In Bruges. In Bruges, yeah. yeah. See, it's not the films, isn't it? It's going to be all the films. Mm. Oh, no, wait, hang on. What's mm. that? Oh, shit. <laughs> I just realised that's number one. That's really surprised me. Yeah? We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get minute. to it. Fuck, that's really surprised me, Saul. Um, number two for me was John Wick. I've got that as one. Yeah, no, no, I really enjoy John Wick. So, fuck. So, are you surprised at my number one? Hang on, I'm trying to work out your number one. Oh, fucking Li- hell. Life is Strange is my number one. You, you, Wow. Wow. Life is Strange. Are you surprised? Genuinely? You prefer surprised? that over Edith Finch? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think the reason why I liked Life is Strange is just because it was just a bit more of a game rather than like an experience. Fucking came out swinging and it all went downhill from there for me. You were like, I'm going to fucking ace this bitch. Uh, um, yeah. Like, I just really, I, I, I think reflecting on it, I was like, I really enjoyed that game. Um, so I really do want to borrow Before the Storm again. Mate, I'll, I will it. lend you Before the Storm and again when I next it. time. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I gave it to you and then I took a back of and I wanted it signed by yeah. Johnny and Aoife. I think I was playing something else at that point or something. I just, I don't think I got around to playing yeah. it. But, I but really no, I, I will give it. you, I probably won't give you the actual box itself because no, no, it's no, now signed. No, no, but no, I'll no, give no, you no. the game. That's fine. No worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so you're, you're number one. Tourisas. So, Tourisas. Very anyway. It's, uh, honestly, I've listened to that album so much. Wow. Since okay. You've barely spoken podcast. about it. Like, I just yeah, didn't I think that you... keep stuff quiet. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, you know, secret, secret, secret. Tourisas fan. I, I never really share my music love all that much. No, no. Like, like Guns N' Roses. Because you said, like, uh, about, because you're playing Beat Saber and you listen mm-hmm. to, like, you know, Imagine Dragons. I was like, yeah. I just didn't really think you liked them. I just, yeah. I just don't know. I just Mate, though, honestly, those, um, those songs are really good on Beat Saber, actually. I can imagine they're they a, be, they're yeah. a nice challenge. Um, but no, Tourist Ass. I genuinely really liked it. Um, and then I 
downloaded a couple of other albums since. Oh shit! And no I've, way. Yeah, I've genuinely really got into them. Oh my god! Like what sort of sort of what's is that still your favorite one then? Your album in terms of that is still to? my favorite one. Yeah. Yes. I think that for me again, like, that's why yes. I gave it to you. It's my it's, favorite one. Uh, it's it's the kind of album I can imagine sticking. I probably mentioned this in the podcast itself. It's this kind of album I can imagine sticking on while playing a D and D campaign. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I want them to do a musical and opera to that again. Yeah. So that in the part, and I think because it's a full orchestra as well as an actual orchestra. Also, like the their copy of like, um, Rampenstein as well is uh, Rap- Rasputin. Rasputin, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. Is better than any other cover that I've heard. Yeah, it's, it's great. great. Really, really good. Wow, Tourisas, that's amazing. And I'm genuinely surprised with Life is Strange as well. Wow. Yeah, man, that's... it's so good. like it was it it was really good. And I just sort of looking back on it, I think I'm just like, that was a really nice game. Um, Life is Strange 2 would destroy you. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Yeah, I know. I know. It's scary. I mean, yeah, it honestly makes the first Life is Strange look like a baby walk oh, as really? far as emotions are concerned. Oh, fucking <laughs> yeah. hell. I just, yeah. And also, it doesn't evolve around a teenage girl, it evolves around a teenage boy Dude, this boy. time. Which is, is nice. Which is what you were saying earlier. Like it always involves a girl, and they're walking around and they're talking lots. Nah, Life is Strange Two evolves yeah. around a a sixteen year old boy through harrowing circumstances. Now has to look after his like eight seven year old brother. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I that makes sense from what I've seen. Yep. I, have, I literally have no idea what it's about at all. Yep. And like, that's yeah. why I'm being very vague about it. If you do decide, yeah, of to course. Like, no, I want to. I really want to. Um, cool. So, wow, we yeah. did it, man. I think I got none of them right. No, literally, you you won that one. Well I done. win. I win. I win. What do I win, Saul? You win my admiration. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've always wanted that. <laughs> I have daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> I just need I need I need I need compliments and admiration all the time. Pretty sure we're seeing your pa- parents after this. We I'll are, be, yeah. I'll be sure to pass on the message. <laughs> I don't. Luckily, he doesn't listen to this podcast. He doesn't love me. <laughs> and does. on that note, <laughs> thank you. Join for... us next time. Or thank... we... No, no, no. Thank you for listening to our year anniversary podcast. Yeah, sorry if it we wasn't did it. Exciting. Well, I think the first part was fine. It was oh, just a whole self-indulgent thing at the end. I, I, to be fair, I only came kind of up with it last night. I was like, <laughs> when are you saying for the end? Hey, it, I liked it. It was good. That was just massive. I'm just so... Re- I'm reeling. <laughs> I'm reeling. I, I didn't I, on my, I didn't give you a, mu- a musician this time just because I thought, oh, you know what? Like, I just didn't think you liked Teresa that much last time. <sighs> Fuck me. Spoiler well, alert. Psych, I did. <laughs> well... We spiked a lot in this, by the way, I think. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, that whiskey went went straight to my head. (laughs) My goodness. And I'd opened another bottle of beer in between you pouring that as well. Do you know what? I've I've not not even... This is the least amount of beer I've drunk in a podcast. It's the whiskey. What can I say? It's good whiskey. I haven't even finished my first beer. (laughs) You've not drunk a beer and a half. Oh and my some whiskey on top God. of that, yeah. This is... <laughs> what the hell? Hey, we should probably end before people we clock should. off. Thank so, you so much for listening. Please do... Go on, you do the fucking outro. If you, you did enjoy this podcast, um, then let us know in the comments down below. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, equally, you can also get hold of us on uh, Let's Talk BS1. That's on our Twitter that's our official Twitter page. So if you have any questions or anything like that, then anything you want us to cover as well, like yeah. you know, it, it, you know, if, if, I don't know, like if, it, chuck in an entertainment exchange and sort of say like, have you guys seen this? Yeah, and maybe I have seen it and Saul hasn't, and he, could, or you know, maybe we both haven't, and then. We it can be a like, big discussion yeah, about yeah, that. That would be it. great. That'd be great. You know, we can t- uh, talk about that. I mean, example that comes to mind from our Christmas episode is Princess Bride. Neither of us Never have watched that. that. Yeah, and so, loads of people were surprised about that. So if you, so, if you want us to what, cover that and watch that, let's do that. Yeah. Um, um, you can get hold of me personally on Twitter uh, at Saul Reed. And you can uh, follow me at Ads Queenie Bond or B. I can never remember. Is it at Queenie Bond? I think it's B. B. Okay. Well, I think whatever. it's B. 
One or two. Most of the people that listen to us are your friends anyway. They, <laughs> they, they can send the fucking questions to you. Uh, Nobody loves me. That's not true. I think Anne listened to this podcast, my yes. mother-in-law. Hi, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening till the end. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for, well, just taking your time out of your day to listen to us. Yeah, Honestly, so it does mean the world and... Uh, all all joking aside, like this past year has genuinely been really good fun. It has, and it's been nice because as it just given us an excuse to hang out. Exactly. Like, like, we don't the, need the, an excuse, the reason but... we did this podcast to begin with is because you had a daughter on the way and we wanted to figure out a way that we could keep talking yeah, to each and, other and basically. Guarantee that and we guarantee actually, yeah, that yeah, we yeah, would yeah. still So for us it's it's been awesome and if you've enjoyed the ride along the way then that's fantastic and we hope that you guys continue to to ride along with us. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, also just chucking it out there as well, if anyone wants to join in and be a guest on the podcast, we we enjoy having guests. Yeah. Actually like we yeah. had like Cat offer a bonus episode. Apart from Max, Max, Max can fuck off. Yeah, Max can fuck off. Prick. Um <laughs> so actually no we haven't like enjoyed guests sort of. <laughs> we honestly, enjoyed one. If you want to be a guest, please do let us know if you can get to uh, <laughs> like sort of the Cambridge if you can get to Norwich the th- um, area then equally we could try a skype thing we can but, try something yeah. it's fine we might have a guest next week next podcast this is news to me um <laughs> yeah we're talking about it you're fine we need to wrap it up yeah, we thank do. you so much for listening yes and please join us next time where we will be talking more bs goodbye bye one whole year birthday to us Happy birthday to us! Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to us! Woo! Ow, oh, I hit the camera counter. <laughs>